Coming up next on the forum, I'll be talking with Tracy Nelson about the Payne Arcade Harvest Fest. That's coming up next on the forum. I'm Sunny. You're watching SPNN's Forum. And sitting with me today, I have a young woman named Tracy Nelson, and she's come to speak with us today about the Payne Arcade Harvest Fest, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. first of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, what is your connection to, I'm, I'm going to tell you straight off the bat, I'm from Chicago. Yep. And I, uh, I learned a lot of stuff through SPNN. Sure. And so, I, this is my first time hearing about the Harvest Fest. Okay. I did a little research. Yeah. But, I mean, tell us... What For those, is. yeah, every, what's, what's going on with the Harvest Fest? Absolutely. Well, this year it's the 109th annual uh, Harvest Fest, and it's probably, I think, the oldest St. Paul Festival, which is a, a pride point for us for sure. Eastside's been here for about 150 years. Mm -hmm. um, the parade used to be one of the biggest in the cities. Okay. Um, it kind of died out about 10 years ago. The Eastside Lions Club had reinitiated a, a buttons program that partnered with the Paint Arcade Business Association, because this is a Paint Arcade Business Association production, mm -hmm. um, to help bring back the big parade. And last year we did. So we had our first year back, the big parade. Okay. About 52 units, you know, fire trucks, floats, uh, marching when, band. When you say units, what do you mean? Units in the parade, uh, like fire trucks, floats, oh, okay. marching bands, <laughs> You were right? explaining it. Right, right, <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, this year our goal is to have more than that, and okay. we're hoping that we will. I know that we've secured a few new um, units in the parade this year, such as the St. Paul Clown Club. That's okay. Really fun. <laughs> um, sounds like we're going to be having the Vulcans from the Winter Carnival, so okay. that's fantastic. And also the no. East Winds. Okay. Um, and if you know anything about Winter Carnival, they have their uh, kind of subgroups, the East Winds, the South Winds, mm -hmm. you know, West Winds, and so on and so forth. So um, we're real happy to have it be part of ours this year. So, okay. Yeah, and it's Saturday, September nineteenth at noon. Okay. Is it one or two? It's one or two days, or Harvest Fest is a weekend long event. Okay. It starts uh, September eighteenth on Friday with the Harvest Fest button specials. Okay. And those button specials are on a, a list on a few different places on the Paba website, which mm -hmm. is uh, paba stpaulorg Okay. Uh, you can find it there, and or you can find it at the. 45 plus locations around the neighborhood that have Harvest Fest buttons. Okay. Okay. They look just like this one here. Okay. Most of the businesses have a button board just like that. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, they also have a list of the other places around that have the button specials. Okay. And a button special is buy a button, get a deal during Harvest Fest weekend. Okay. So, such as Friday, um, I know that, for instance, Ward 6 here where we're at today, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be having happy hour all weekend. Okay. So that's all day, right? all weekend, okay. all day, all weekend. I always miss happy hour. So you can make yeah, you can make your money back off your button off of just coming here for happy hour. Okay, you know, um, same thing with many many other places in the neighborhood. Uh, Friday night, there's a couple of events they're going to kick off. The West Side Band's going to be playing at the Minnesota Music Cafe. Okay. And uh, the James Zachary Band's going to be playing at the Mounds Park Sports Lounge over on Hudson Road. Mm -hmm. So even though it's called the Payne Arcade Harvest Fest, it's really an all-encompassing neighborhood thing. Yeah, I was. I mean, I was wondering because whenever I hear about a festival or a, I, I think of one street, so was it like all these businesses get together and they just they're celebrating? Yeah. The East Side. Yes, that's oh, okay. what the Buttons Program uh, starts to initiate. It's an invitation to the businesses to say, hey, Harvest Fest is coming up. Okay. Have a special, invite people back, you okay. know, be a part of it, have a unit in the parade. Okay. You know, um, years ago it used to be sidewalk sales up and down mm -hmm, both mm -hmm. avenues, you know, the, I should say Payne Avenue and Arcade Street. Mm -hmm. um, that's not as much anymore, but I'm still pushing for a couple of them to, you know, okay. throw a table out. Why right. not? You right. know, you're going to be out there for the parade anyways. Let's make it a good time. Okay. So, yeah. So, so you said it. Um, it's a hundred and this year's the hundred and ninth. So yep. what's what? Nineteen oh six. So what happened that it died down, and then what brought it back? I I think that I'm a real estate broker by trade. Okay. Uh, so, my personal belief is that it was just the economy and the whole real estate market mm -hmm. kind of, you know, vacancy ratings. That wasn't just residential. That was businesses as well. Mm -hmm. And we've had a big 
rebirth uh, mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. I, I attribute it to many things. Um, there's a, a lot of different community organizations uh, as well as the Paint Arcade Business Association that are doing great things in the neighborhood to help bring back business and commerce to the area. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have places like Ward 6 or Tongue and Cheek down the block, mm -hmm. then you've got the local favorites, of course, like uh, Pirelli's, Eurosos, mm -hmm. Porky's, and Magnolia's, you know. Um, it's just a, a great atmosphere, and we're trying to promote the neighborhood with all that it has to offer to bring mm -hmm. people back into it, and it's, it's working. We just won uh, the Munch Madness from the St. Paul Pioneer Press a, really? couple, a month and a half ago, <laughs> two months ago. Okay, yeah, well, they congratulations. Had, uh, St. Paul Pioneer Press had a little Eat Street competition. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, Why Payne Avenue. I informed of this. <laughs> right? right? It was uh, Payne Avenue versus Selby and, you know, Tiffany Frost and those type of places. Oh, nice. There. And we blew them away. I think we won by like 78%. So when does this happen? And I need, is, is this an annual thing? Uh, it's an annual thing. Okay. Yes. So every September, um, it used to be the second week, but now it's the third week in September. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, for the whole weekend. So there's events happening the whole weekend. The highlight is on Saturday, which is the Paint Arcade Harvest Fest Parade. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this year we should have hopefully more than the 52 units we had last mm -hmm. year. We're working on it, and I, okay. I believe we will. Um, there's going to be uh, a, a great number of people, and we have uh, an announcer this year, a Lion Jeff Burke from the South St. Paul Lions Club, okay. who also does announcing for the Composure Days Parade has okay. offered to come help us with our parade this year. So nice. we have an official announcer. I believe you guys will be there covering us, so mm -hmm. that's exciting. And so there, there will actually be a parade? Yes. Oh, okay. Parade. Okay. So, I'm so getting them, the two confused. So it's a, oh. it's so uh, the festivities for the entire weekend involve all of the business, but there will actually be a parade. What day will yes. the parade take place? That's Saturday, September 19th at noon. Okay, and yep. where does it start? Where does it finish? It's going to start on Payne Avenue at Rose Street, okay. and it's going to go down to Wells. Oh, nice. So it's about a 10 block parade route. Okay. Yeah. Uh, years ago, it used to go all the way down to Minnehaha. We'd like to have it go down to Minnehaha mm -hmm. again, but it's a matter of growing and bringing it mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, next year or the year after, we'll be able to do it. Be that. a little longer. Okay. Yeah. So, why are you invested in all of this? Um, what, what is your what is what keeps you coming back to this passion? I'm an East Sider. Right? Okay, <laughs> you know, once an East Sider, always, always an East Sider. You I, heard the story, right? I, I lived I lived on the East Side during college. Okay, so I know I know a little bit about the the area, but to just to speak with you before even the interview and to find out all these different stores, and you can definitely see the development yeah. on Payne. You can definitely see the difference between. I won't tell nobody. I was in college 10 years ago. But, <laughs> but I can see changes in the neighborhood. So do you think that has anything to do with people's interest in um, getting yes. back involved with the, with the fest? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think how I, I initially started getting involved in this was I started a Facebook group mm -hmm. about eight years ago called East St. Paul. Okay. Um, I grew up off of Fifth and Ruth over in the Sunray area. Mm -hmm. And there used to be a post office up in Sunray called East St. Paul. Okay. So that's how we used to address our mail. Okay. Anywho, I, I wanted to get that story out and start sharing with some people, you know, all the positive things that are happening because it seems like that's what I focused on with my mm -hmm. kids in school and Harding area football and my work in real estate and whatnot. And uh, I started sharing stories in this Facebook page, which has just hugely Bubbled. grown. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's over 16,000 people in it now. Wow. And it's just a fan page for the East Side. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that, I think, was uh, step one. Then I got involved in the Eastside Lions Club, uh, where I'm the president now. And I'm sure that was partially because they thought, well, she can get us on Facebook. Well, I mean, yeah, if you if you pull together 16,000 people just talking about Eastside St. Paul, that's, that's, right? that's something. And, and, I mean, the group has made itself. It's like the, mm -hmm. the more people that get into it, the more they share, the more people want to be a part of it. I like you that know? you said you were saying a lot of positive stuff because I, I, I do hear a lot of negative stuff about Eastside, and I like that you focused... Right. on the positive of it, and that so many people responded. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. I think that there's uh, just so much history and so much pride to the neighborhood. I think that there's more of a, uh, a negative persona that's an attitude rather than a, a reality. Right, you okay. Know, to say that there's not crime or, or not blight or whatever, anywhere, anywhere in the major right. metropolitan area would be incorrect. Right. But to focus on it completely and blame it on any one area, and the east side of St. Paul is one-third of St. Paul, mm -hmm. or nearly one-third. It's about 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the borders go all the way to the borders of Maplewood, Woodbury, mm -hmm. downtown, you know, all the way around. So, uh, when you hear a news story and they say what happened on the east side, it's just so generalizing mm -hmm. that it's not fair to all the good things that take place every day. And I didn't feel that 
you know, there was a real forum for that to mm -hmm. be communicated. And I think that's why the Facebook group took off. So, do you um, think that would negatively affect the growth of the, of the the regrowing of the Harvest Fest? Some of the negative um, connections. I think that it slowed the progress, but mm -hmm. I think that the progress is taking over now. I think there's okay. a lot of momentum. I mean, having you know nearly 50 businesses involved in this buttons program, I think, is proof in itself. Knowing that we're going to have 50 plus units in our parade that's only the second year back right. is uh, proof in the pudding. And right I now. think once other businesses start to see yeah. the the benefit and if people are coming, you know, so exactly. what exactly. are you most excited about for that weekend? Oh, <laughs> you know, because I know <laughs> definitely I, from, the parade from a from you know. a from a, a, per, from a perspective of you creating it and organizing it. I know you're going to have like what 24 hours of rest before you're starting up on the next. Right, right. <laughs> well, I'm the parade coordinator this year. Uh, there's many other uh, and I'm with the Paint Arcade Business Association on their behalf uh, doing that parade coordination. But there are other entities in the neighborhood that are having additional events. So for instance, Saturday, it's going to kick off with the official pancake breakfast mm -hmm. over at Arlington Hills Lutheran Church. Okay. And uh, button deal there too. If mm -hmm. you didn't have tickets beforehand, you can show up with a button and get a couple dollars off of the door. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be a nice event. That's going to be from 8 to 11. Uh, the parade lineup will start at 1030, but everybody needs to be in line by 1130. And we'll right. head off at noon. Right after the parade, there's three larger events on Payne Avenue and three events on Arcade Street as well. Okay. Um, Payne Avenue is going to have the International Fest, which is going to be in the lot right next to us at Ward 6 here. It's okay. on the corner of Payne and Gary. Okay. Then up the block at Salvation Army, they're going to have uh, the Harvest Fest Marketplace, which is going to be vendors, crafters, you know, little carnival type of setting, so mm -hmm. that's kind of nice. And then up at the Arlington Hills Community Center, which is a big new improvement in the narrative. I heard, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 14 million dollar project or something like okay. that. Something huge. Anyways, they're having the Harvest Family Fest, so it's going to be geared towards family and, and uh, having fun and food and okay. such like that. Over on Arcade Street, m and Gas Station is having a barbecue. I, I read that. Right? <laughs> barbecue in the parking lot. That's the way it should be. And then the Eastside YMCA, the director over there, Courtney Troyer, oh, wow. she is um, one of our lions as well. And uh, she's having the Harvest Fest 3-on-3 three -three basketball tournament. Oh, nice. So that's on our poster as well. And then the American Legion is hosting the Paint Arcade Business Association kind of reception after the parade for the parade participants. Okay. So wow. there's, there's going to be those events. Uh, Tammy Klinkhammer is the president of PABA this year. She's been instrumental. She's working on the lineup numbers right now as mm -hmm. we speak, I'm sure. Um, and Joy from Eastside Neighborhood Development Company. Uh, she's working closely with Laura Torres. And Laura Torres is the event coordinator over here at the International Fest. Um, Marty Lofgren. She's one of the contacts over at Salvation Army that's putting together that. So there's just a, a lot of people in the neighborhood that have kind of rallied Come support together. for getting out, you know, making it a fun time for everybody. Just hear, just hearing, how, how would you navigate somebody? Like, I mean, how, where, where's a good place to start? It just seems like there's so much stuff going on and you don't want to miss anything. Right, right, exactly. Um, I, I, I know that the poster is a guidebook for me to be able <laughs> okay. to tell everybody. Okay. And, and the, they did such a great, unbelievable job over at Ideal Printers this year. They they set it all up and they set it up to look like. Is it is it low? Is it based on location or business? Or yeah, main? they did a Payne Avenue on one side. We can maybe show you. Okay. So, yeah, they did Payne Avenue on the one side. Okay. Oh, okay. And then they did arcade. arcade Street on okay. The other. Okay. Uh, they highlighted the button specials, obviously the parade right okay. in the middle, and um, some of the other events that are happening. There is a, a large event happening over in Mounds Park mm -hmm. on that same Saturday. It's okay. the Urban Oasis Food Fest and 5K race. Oh, um, This is run by Tracy Sides. I don't know if you've heard her name. She won that million dollar, uh, I think it was McKnight Foundation grant a couple years ago to okay. redo that building down in the Bruce Vento Nature Sanctuary. No, I didn't, um, I didn't hear that. It didn't end up flying there, but she's got some other great connections in the community and, and making uh, Urban Oasis big name for uh, healthy foods and, oh, and nice. health and fitness all together. Okay. Um, another new announcement we just had was the Grand Marshal for this year's parade. Okay. And that's Ed Burgess from Schweitz's Saloon and Eatery. Okay. Um, Schweitz's is a, a big part of Harvest Fest, I think, for a lot of people that remember Harvest Fest the mm -hmm. way it was when it was a big grand deal. Mm -hmm. Every year after the parade, there was uh, street vendors and 
the sidewalk sales mm -hmm. and there was always a tent party at Schweitz's. I mean, you just, I don't care where you were. <laughs> if you grew up in Woodbury, you were coming to Tucky Coming into the tent, tent okay. Party. Yeah, you know. So uh, Eddie Burgess had uh, worked for a couple of years at getting this business back together there because he, he was a new owner and had been sitting vacant. Um, did a beautiful remodel job, added the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year had his grand opening on parade day to kind of highlight the parade and of course this business. Mm -hmm. um, uh, soon after he found out that he's got some serious health issues, mm. uh, but he still stuck with it. And just a, a bright face in the neighborhood and some of the business owners had got together and talked and one had written a letter to the Paint Arcade Business Association highlighting all the things that he's done to be a part of the neighborhood and promote this kind of iconic business in the neighborhood and uh, voted him in to be the Grand Marshal. So the oh, president, nice. Yeah, the president of the Paint Arcade Business Association, again, Tammy Clinkhammer, she would made the decision to bring him in. To make yeah. him be the Grand Marshal. We just got the press release going out today about that. Okay. So, well, congratulations to him. Yeah, he's yeah. really excited. And the fact that he's hanging in there, too, yeah. what he's going through. So yeah. for, uh, so for someone who wants to find out information, you have a website. I know you have a Facebook page. What is the face? It's just called Eastside St. Paul? Or? My Facebook page is that... Yeah, East St. Paul group. I should say it's everybody's Facebook page. <laughs> Sixteen thousand people. It's not mine anymore. Um, but there's also a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Facebook.com. You know, forward slash groups. Mm -hmm. Forward slash Haba Harvest Fest 2015. Okay. So that's the specified group that I try to keep updated as often as possible with the information. Also, there's the Paint Arcade Business Association website, and that is uh, www.st. Paul. Or sorry, Haba P A B A. Dash St. Paul .org. Okay. okay. So there's uh, many ways to find it. I think if you Googled at this point, it should come up. It should come up. I would think so. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you said you have a real estate background, right? Yes. Or you have your own business. I in do. Real I own real estate park base. Okay. I'm a broker and I've been in the business for about 20 years. Okay. So tell us about the east side. Tell us about how um, the development, how everything's been changing in the last 10 years. And um, I guess whether that's affected the Harvest Fest or not. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, I would say that, you know, from a, a decade ago when they last had the big parade, it was still a pretty big parade, you know. Um, the in-between years, I, I don't think the, the parade or the festival was the issue. I think it was just the, the loss on, on real estate values, the whole economy, that structure, vacancy ratings uh, with not only homes but businesses. You know, when there's an economic downfall, there's a, a turn of events within neighborhoods. And this being always been a kind of a, a starter neighborhood, you know. Mm -hmm. What do you mean when you say starter neighborhood? Uh, for instance, uh, my grandparents are, are immigrants from Sweden. Oh, right? where people, where they first moved to in the cities. Right, okay. right. You, you go to where you can afford to go. Okay. And I think that typically the areas that are closest downtown seem to be the most affordable. Mm -hmm. And it's not just here, it's Rice Street and, you know, West Side and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And this is where the kind of American dream happens. It's where you get to come in and, and start a business and, and grow and, and create what it's going to be, mm -hmm. you know. And we had just such a vacancy and a loss mm -hmm. that once the economy started to turn around, it started happening again. So mm -hmm. new businesses started coming in. We've mm -hmm. got a, a large Latino-based business community that has done wonders for the Avenue mm -hmm. and uh, all over the neighborhood, really. Um, it makes sense if the if there were um, economic issues with the business, then they're not going to be a part. They're not going to invest in the parade. So that makes sense. Right, right. Um, also. Like, for instance, where we're at again, uh, mm -hmm. Ward 6, these guys came through about three years ago, and I know for the year before they came, there was a lot of that little chit-chat gossip, like, oh, it's just not going to fly here, mm. this is, you know, Payne Avenue, and you know, the persona mm -hmm. really is what tried to draw them back, and they said, nope, it's going to work great, and I thought, I know it's going to work great, because I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all the people I know that want to go out to lunch someplace close by instead of having to run out to Maplewood or having to run downtown. Right. Not that downtown isn't great. I mean, Lower Town's just had such a great boom. And mm -hmm. I, I attribute some of that success downtown coming up here to being part of our success. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, there's just such a, a great amount of hype about the new ball stadium and, mm -hmm. you know, all the new businesses down there. Um, but, you know, the food's fantastic. The atmosphere's great. Mm -hmm. The people are all friendly. So, I think it you know. brings a lot of different people to the East Side St. Paul too. With, yeah. do you think um, the 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 addition of the light rail? Do you think that has anything to do with um, bringing people to the East Side with I the do. development? I think that the Phelan Corridor project 
uh, that kind of reopening up industry on the boulevard. I don't think a lot of people realize all the new industry that's on it. Mm -hmm. I think that the light rail bringing people in, absolutely. Okay. Um, but the boulevard, for instance, I think the east side used to be really known for you know, Whirlpool and 3M and some of the major mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, employers mm -hmm. and contributors, very blue collar neighborhood. Um, when this boulevard went in a decade ago, I think that people thought there was going to be some instant success to it, but it's like anything else, you know, it, it takes a while to build and grow. And now we've got major uh, industry on it with the health partners, specialty centers, uh, the Health East Transportation, uh, we have new medical clinics, we have uh, the St. Paul Port Authority that's invested in cleaning up some of the land so that that's ready for resale and mm -hmm. it's growing. It, you, you can know. see it though, yeah. you can see it, I mean just from when I lived here in in college, you can definitely see um, the difference in how it looks. So right, and so. then the brewery. Uh, you know, everybody knew the East Side for Hams Brewery, mm -hmm. and they have Hams on tap here at Ward Six too. I got to tell you. <laughs> Anywho, uh, now we have the new Flat Earth Brewery, also known as the St. Paul Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. uh, they just had their tap room grand opening this last Saturday, and that's a fantastic place. It's like all this exposed brick, and mm -hmm. they use it for rental space as well. If you want to have a wedding reception or, oh. or whatnot. Um, fantastic tap root beer if you're, you're into root beer mm -hmm. but yeah, they have yeah so I'm not into root beer but I know some people who are root beer right, fanatics right. so, so that's have, good to hear right <laughs> they have the the tilapia farm next door um, I'm trying to think of the name but it's like uh, something organics urban organics mm -hmm. I believe it's something like that anyways it's an indoor tilapia farm they have three big blue tubs full of, of the different sizes of tilapia the water system is filtrated through an indoor hydroponic garden. Oh, wow. And, yeah, it's an indoor <laughs> garden center. So, On the east side. Right, right. <laughs> St. Paul. Uh, I, I heard that there was a, a local restaurateur here that uh, served specifically African food, and they had to import a certain herb or spice that mm -hmm. was always in the food. And it was costly. Mm -hmm. Well, when they'd heard about this place, they got connected with them, and now they grow it. You know, within oh, wow. blocks of their business, so they don't have to go through the whole import process. When we get done, you have to tell me where that African right. spot is. <laughs> I think it's know. called African Delights. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, I'm about yeah. to check that out. Right. I'm always looking for, for, is it West African, East African food? I, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I've okay. had it at, like, uh, different events that, that mm -hmm. they've been a part of. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Food. Okay, well, very I know. Good. Right, right. right. <laughs> I, I, I'm always looking for, for restaurants like this. So. Right, right. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tracy, for coming out and okay. uh, inviting us here to Ward 6. Yeah, I'm very cool. interested in going in there because they were cooking something with garlic. Very, very good. <laughs> and grabbing something out of there. And I'm really excited to know that the east side has got some positive stuff going on. Yeah. Um, growth and, and Growth and, yeah, and, and African food on the east That's side. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but thank you. We have it all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. My name is Sani, and you've been watching SPNN's Forum.